G'day, it's Farmer Jay, and welcome back to Dairy Air Farms. First thing I'd like to do, and I forgot to do this in the last video, was to thank everybody that has supported me during the tornado, or the Dureco as it was called, and the ensuing chaos and power outage that followed. So a great big thank you to all of you everything you did your support meant a great deal now I know a lot of you want me to take a look at the AGI pack and I will definitely be doing that I just want a day or two to fully fully get to know it like I said I only just really got back online and I don't want to go off half cocked and find out there's something missing. So in the meantime, um, the subject I do want to talk about today is patch 1.5. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and I think patches are very important to talk about. Don't mind me driving over the grass. Uh, patches are very important to talk about because they either make or break the game. We all know the last patch broke the game with its horrible, horrible power limit. And patch 1.5 claims to address that. Uh, it also has one other very key feature to it um, that I talked about briefly in my last video. And I will link to that when I get to it. But that's um, new support for AMD. Now, I could just load up the patch notes page and read through it and tell you what has changed and what hasn't. But you're just as capable of reading the patch notes as I am. So I thought I would address them, talk about them a little bit, to give you a little bit more in-depth insight as to some of the changes and whether or not I think they're good or bad or not applicable. Um, obviously the pallet limits very applicable and we will talk about that. Um, some of the other stuff uh, I feel is a bit of a mixed bag. There are definitely some quality of life improvements and quality of life improvements are always good um, as they help play the game. And I've also had a bit of a chance to play so I also want to talk about some of the bugs or some of the things that I have found in patch 1.5 that so far I haven't really seen too many talk about. So I don't know if it's me or if it's a combination of patch 1.5 and the precision farming update. Um, but I'll also go into those. So, first and foremost, the big thing is um, patch 1.5 introduces support for AMD's Super Resolution or FSR 2.0. And as I mentioned in my other video, I have noticed that has given me a significant boost to in performance. Um, now, make sure you download patch 1.5 and the drivers. By only downloading one or the other, you are not going to get the benefits. Although, as I say in my other video, I did notice that the AMD drivers by themselves have given a boost to performance um, even on older cards that don't support 
FSR or um, the new AMD technologies. Um, now, along with the support for Fidelity Super Resolution F or FSR 2.0, they have also added an upscaling sharpness slider for both DLSS and Fidelity Super Resolution, both 1 and 2. I haven't found that yet, and I haven't played with it, but I think it recognized my video card and took advantage a little bit of it because my game definitely looks sharper now. All right, let's talk about the palette limit, which is the next major thing that most people are interested in. The new palette limit is as follows. Windows, it is 300. A Mac is 300. So basically computers now have a palette limit of 300. The PlayStation 4 is 75. Um, so definitely watch the video because there are def on um, workarounds for the palette limit. Because 75 is not a lot and you can do better on a PS4 than 75 if you use... Um, the storage warehouse. The PS5 is 150, Xbox One 75, same as a PS4, and uh, and the Xbox Series X, same as a PS5, is 150. Um, I'm gonna leave the discussion as to whether or not I think that's enough for a later date. It's a touchy subject, and I don't think the Giants will ever make anyone happy. <coughs> and I think there are probably things they could have done better, even with this new palette limit, um, to implement it better. I'll go into that at the end of the video. While I talk, I'm also going to try and play a little bit so that you're not sitting there bored. Um, like I said, it would be the same as me just reading off the patch notes. And I don't want to do that. So I need, now is a time, May is a time to sell clothes, and I believe I have plenty, plenty of clothes um, to sell. Yes, I have a lot. <coughs> okay, well that loads up. Let's talk about some of the other issues or things that are new in patch 1.5. Actually, before I go any further, I know I've mentioned it before in what to do about the pallet limit, but I am still using the distribution warehouse. And as you can see, I, if you add all this up, I have a lot more than 300 pallets. The nice thing is once they're in the warehouse, they don't count. All I have to do, I'll link the video in the description. Like I said, all I have to do is change it from distributing to storing and everything pops out here. So I'm free to take it wherever I need to. Um, So the first change that's listed in the change log is added permissions, manage production points. Mm. 
that's more of a multiplayer feature it doesn't really affect me or you guys if you're single player players um, hopefully if you're playing on a multiplayer server the server admin knows how to adjust those settings this is a quality of life improvement they added slurry tanks to the AI refill options um, for those of you who are not aware you can go into your um, game settings and you can change where your slurry tank or manure spreader fills from before you could only and I'll show you that quickly for those that haven't done it yet or haven't needed to do it. Um, general, is it general settings? No, it is. Here we are in game settings. So for those of you that didn't know before, you could set it to a barn and have it automatically supply your slurry tanker. For manure, you could have it tied into the manure heap extension that's still the only one you can tie it into but I have two pigsties a cow barn a slurry tank so that's my liquid manure tank the bulk one that's a pigsty secondary and guess what they finally added the biogas plant so you can draw digestate to your slurry spreader without having to constantly go back and forth and refill um, again depending on your play style um, i find that a quality of life improvement because well As much as I try and play realistically, after a while, it gets rather boring in single player trying to drive back and forth and keep your slurry spreader filled. So when I don't feel like playing realistically or when I have a lot to do, like in the springtime just prior to planting, I can turn that option on and not worry about my slurry tank running out of slurry while I'm busy seeding a field or fertilizing a field. So to me, that's it's about time they did it and I'm really glad they did it. Added support for multiple animation object moving sounds um i'm not sure what that means it's probably something fairly simple um but moving is in quotes so it could mean any number of things uh, they added an abort button to the tour uh menu so when you start a new game uh, if you decide you want to abort the tour you can which i think is pretty good um, let's see how much we get for all these clothes. 400, we got half a million plus, uh, 159,000 in environmental score award. Okay. Um... Next up, fix bunker silo update. Uh, not sure what that means. The only thing I can think is the bunker silos now update properly. So when they're empty, you don't have to worry about stuff being left over. The next one is fixed chain jittering on, and I'm gonna butcher this, the June Heinrich ETV 216i not sure what that is um, but I didn't know it was a problem 
fixed cutter effect still active while cutter is lifted um, hmm interesting um, if that's to do with combines your cutter bar will still stay active when you raise your header so I'm not sure if that's what that has to do or if it has to do with something else minor bug fixed decal Z flight Deutz far top liner okay um, fixed loading of save games with custom mod bales I've never messed with custom mod bales I've always used the game default ones um, personally since they've now added variable bale size capacities I haven't seen a need uh, like where there was in Farming Simulator 19 to download custom bale sizes. Fixed material issue with Salek PN 2-300. Okay, not a big deal. Fixed material issue. Uh, fixed missing bags on some pallets in multiplayer. Not a multiplayer player, so I wasn't aware that that was an issue. Fixed NPC field and contract updates. So hopefully contracts are working again as they're supposed to. Um, for those of you who don't know, contracts were kind of fixed. Giants thought that fixed the problem set the settings back to the way they used to be and all of a sudden contracts were not yielding or paying out what they should have been paying out again so hopefully they got it right this time i'll definitely have to take a look at some contracts and see All right, next one is fixed password field UTF-8 issue. As far as I know, that's a Windows issue and to do with your security, uh, hard drive security. Fixed placeable collision checks. Okay, minor improvement, hopefully. Uh, fixed placeable, rena placeable renaming permissions. Um, oh, boy let's have a quick look and see what we can rename I know so I just wondered if I could rename the supermarket or some of the other buildings around and I can't um, so it's just for placeables you can place Uh, they also fixed an issue where you couldn't sleep properly in multiplayer, so you can do that now. Fix sound issues with high-frequency audio devices. Okay, cool. Um, I still have some problems with sound, I've noticed. Fix trailer tipping for clients joining in multiplayer. Not a big deal. Fix vehicle character visibility for Class Arian 500, 5000. Fix Class Arian 5000 clip distance. Fix Massey Ferguson 8S motor configs and base wheel settings. Okay, that's kind of good for Massey Ferguson fans. Fix wrapping animations I have to leave in the game during the wrapping sequence. Um, hmm. Fixed controller setting dead zone text. Fixed ambient sound in period mid-winter. Um, fixed centering force with force feedback wheels on Xbox. Improved performance of grapevines and olives on lower spec hardware. Okay, I'm going to go back to that because it ties into what I'm talking about with pallets in a little bit. In Improve placeable rotation and snapping. Uh, I'm hoping that means they added um, 
some more rotation to certain placeables that were had to be diagonal or parallel and they weren't able to be freely rotated again giants is terrible they don't go into a lot of details with their patch notes they kind of let you read through it and figure it out uh, improved fan mt100 tail trailer attach a joint height okay again more with the class Zarian 5000 um, optional weight price settings have been fixed or improved increased pallet limits we already talked briefly about that and improved several mpc visual fixes so this wasn't <sighs> apart from the pallet fix and the introduction of fidelity super resolution it wasn't a major patch now some of the things i have noticed that have broken since the patch or the patch has caused problems for me at least and sound off in the comments if you're having these problems um all my animals have aged um my heifers have now become cows and they are over well that either well, they're between 24 and 52 months uh, the majority being 52 months so i lost a lot of value fortunately milk production seems to be high still same with the pigs the age of the pigs is is they've all aged um and i know before the patch came out i cleared out my older animals so that i would have younger breeding stock and my pens are full again and they're full of old animals so what happened there i'm not sure my pigs and my cows also had virtually no food or straw when i loaded into the game after installing patch 1.5 however their slurry and manure was pretty much full um so obviously the game did some sort of calculation or conversion and messed with that setting somehow i'm not sure about my crops because i didn't have as good an idea of where my crops stood as i did where my animals stood and that was literally purely by chance because i went through all my animals to get rid of my older animals to make way for new breeding stock Um, so we talked about straw uh, no m some of the other issues of precision farming like nitrogen levels um, oh a lot of times when I exit the game now it doesn't exit to the main menu um, I get a subterranean view kind of looking up at elm creek or obeleran from underneath and it freezes and i have to alt tab out of the game and exit it uh, a hard exit um so i'm not sure what's caused that my sugar cane was due to be and this could be precision farming update or it might not be but my sugar cane was due to be wow i just made a ton of money off clothing um okay um i went from four million to eight million wow wow um anyway sorry i'm off topic here 
I'm gonna replace all my old tractors with 20, well, with 10 or more hours on them. That's gonna be my, my goal with this money. All right, let's talk about what everybody wants to talk about, which is the pallet limit. Um, they've increased the limit, I wouldn't say they have fixed the limit. They have kind of changed it from a blanket number, a very low blanket number, and they've now kind of adjusted it based on the machine type you're running. Now a PC is limited to 300 pallets. A PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X is not quite the same as a PC. Well, it depends on the specs of your PC. So, they've kind of arbitrarily assigned numbers to the pallet limit to say, okay, this will work on a PC, this will work on a console, and To me, again, it's kind of an arbitrary or a hard fast fix. Um, 'Take the line' is like we talked about earlier, where they've improved. I knew I was going to hit somebody. Where they say they've, and I was because I was looking at the patch notes again. Um, they have improved the performance of grapes and olives on lower end machines. So if they can adapt that sort of thing to lower end machines, so it works better depending on your performance specs, surely they can do the same thing for pallets. <coughs> so rather than randomly assigning a number of 300 which is going to be two well for me i'm running a good system i have 32 gigs of ram i have a, a decent video card i have a ryzen six uh eight core 16 thread processor it's a 3700x um so I had absolutely no problems with, well, I won't say unlimited because I was selling pallets, but I had no problems with pallets. So could they have not scaled it somehow based on per processor performance the same way as the game detects your graphics and computer specs when it first loads and it determines what the game thinks your optimal game setting should be? Surely, if giants can program that, they can program something similar for pallets. Like I said, my concern is 150 on consoles. Those consoles are going to run a lot better than the computer my daughter uses, which has no problem or still had no problem with pallets. And it's a two generations older than the one I have. Basically, I handed it down to her. As you saw, I just took two trailer loads. The first load was a full load of 40 clothing, and the other one, which I'd been, I'd been saving up for a while, was a load of another was it 26 so i took 66 or 64 i don't remember the exact number pallets of clothing to the sell point that doesn't include all the other pallets i still have lying around and have in storage so I have way more than th 
the 300, I was going to say 500, it's 300 pallets that Giant says I should have. Like I said, I just, 64 of them gone like that. Um, flour builds up like crazy. I have 100,000 liters of flour. Fortunately, in the storage warehouse, I've maxed it out. Um, 100,000 liters at 1,000 liters. Uh, that's what, 100 pallets right there. Taking other things, and yes, I'm up to that 300 limit again almost instantly. So no, I don't think Giants fix the pallet problem. I fi think they kind of tried to compromise and make everyone happy. So anyway, that's my two cents on pallets and what they should have done and how they have improved the situation, but I don't think they've fixed the situation. One final thing I almost missed in the patch notes, and this is definitely another quality of life issue, is you can now tell there's a, if you look at the bottom of my HUD, and I think if I no, has to be F1 has to be open. But you can now tell what's in my mixing wagon, or what's in your mixing wagon for TMR, without actually having to have a tractor hooked up to it and get into that tractor to check. So it will tell you I have 40% hay and 44% silage and 15% straw so I know what my mix ratio is and can just accordingly just using a front end loader um, kind of takes the guesswork out of it which is kind of handy for most people um, if you watched one of my other videos on how to make the perfect mix of TMR you will already know what the ratios are but with so many custom mixing wagons coming out, this is definitely a plus. Anyway, let me know what you think of patch 1.5. Let me know what problems you've had with it, uh, if any. And we will see you in the next video, like I said, which will be our deep dive into the... AGI Westfield DLC that came with patch 1.5. Um, so far, I think it looks very promising, but I really do want to try the features out. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And we will see you next time. Take care, Jay.